Hey there kids, welcome to another math video. This is for Eureka Math, grade five, uh, module two, lesson 22 homework. And the objective is at the bottom of the page as always in super, super tiny writing. And today we're really getting into some bigger long division. We're gonna divide three and four digit dividends, that's inside the bracket, by two digit divisors resulting in two and three digit quotients. Uh, up on the top on the answer line, which still has to be considered uh, the place value of those. Reasoning about the decomposition of successive remainders in each place value. Decomposition, what a great word. Uh, it's like they're all dying. Okay, so um, we're gonna take these apart. Okay, this is what we're taking apart. And we're putting it in, I, I just like to say in say, groups of 21 or 21 groups and these are kind of uh, you can mix and match you can say 23 groups of 21 or 21 groups of 23 it just depends on what you're doing and what the word problem would represent we're also going to be doing that check that helps you to see if you did it correctly by putting back everything that you you made with your sets of whatever it is 21 here and then adding up the remainder, and those are just the pieces that are left after we do all of our calculations. So let's get started. 15 is on the outside. 485 is on the inside. Keep your work nice and neat, uh, because these are going to be a little bit longer. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our divisor and say this. I always just talk it through, like, how many of these can I fit into? And then I'm going to start with uh, one digit at a time. So how many 15s can you fit into four? None. So you're going to take in that eight and say, well, okay, well, then I can use 48 as my dividend. We're still talking about 48 tens. And so our first digit in the quotient is going to go here up above the eight tens. Now, if you're pretty good at skip counting, uh, you might want to skip count by 15s. You can do 15, 30, 45, or uh, you can just do your rounding and then kind of guess if I round it up, 20, 40, 20, 40, 60. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and guess 3 because I know that 3 times 15 is 45. And then don't forget all those steps that divide, multiply, subtract, compare, bring down. That's the steps of the division family. You're going to be doing that over and over. So we've done our divide, we did our multiply, and now we're going to do our subtract. I have 3 left over. The quick compare just means look at it and make sure this is less than your divisor. The leftovers or the remainder has to be less than this set, okay, or the number in the set. Now that it is, I'm going to do my next step to bring down, okay, and we're going to do this repeatedly. Now I have 35, and you may have heard me count that last time I did 15, 30, 45, so if I have two 15s, I will get 30. So when you divide, this is what you're dividing now. We're all done with this part up here and we're taking this apart. So 35 is left out of the 485. And we're gonna make another set of 15. I can do that two times using 30. When you do your subtraction, you get five left over. And because we're gonna stop here, we're not gonna do anything with decimals and annexing uh, like we did in module one. We're just gonna take our remainder and we're gonna put it up here, remainder five. Okay, so it's not another full set of 15 of anything. We are going to do a check, which takes the outside, so it's going to be the 32, and remember how they do it this way, and I'm like, what fifth grader is going to get 483 by doing this? I'm sorry, but no one. So we're going to use the standard algorithm because we have uh, two digits, we have a two by two, and so there's regrouping and rearranging, and I don't want you to make any mistakes. So 32 or 15 on top, but I usually take whatever's bigger. Sometimes I'll put the quotient, I don't know. You can mix and match because the commutative property says you'll get the same answer. Five times two is 10, carry that one. Five times three, 15 plus one is 16. We're, now we're on to the 10, so hold that place with a zero or move over to the tens place. One times two is two, one times three is three. Add them up and get 480. Now the 480, since I'm, I don't want to crash into my next problem, I'm going to take that and I'm going to move it up and say 480. What else do I do? I'm going to add the 5 
that is the remainder. So you multiply the outside and add the remainder. Okay, multiply, add. That's what your check is, multiply, add. So we've got our 485, and then when you get back to or have your final number, you're supposed to actually look, make the connection, notice that you got all the way back to the original dividend, and then we put a star and move on. Let's do the next one a little faster. 21 into 700. Now, that's a big number, so I'm gonna look at 21 and 70, and I'm gonna use my 20, 40, 60, 80. I'm gonna count by 20s, because remember, the first step in division is to round the divisor first and then skip count by that number until you get as close as you can without going over. So if I do 20, 40, 60, that's three, and if I did 80 for four, that would be over, plus I have even more than 20. So I'm gonna use three. Three times one and three times two. And that leaves us with a small remainder for this problem, which using the steps of the division family means I'm okay to move on and bring down the 70, which gives me what I had before. So I'm gonna go ahead and divide the 71s this time by 21. I'm gonna use three again because I know that that worked and that will leave me with a remainder of seven. And that's okay today. We would continue on and if we did this, we could go forever. That's a, that's a long time, people, forever. But I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> it's a mighty long time, but I'm gonna tell you. Uh, the people from the 80s know what I'm talking about. Anyway, sorry, those pop up every now and then. Um, there's something else, the aftermath. Uh, we're going to be doing our check here. One times three is three. One times three is three. Move on over. Two times three is six. Two times three is six. Add these up. I've got 693, but I'm not done yet because I have my remainder. Six, nine, three plus seven. Now, you don't have to carry it over here. If you have super tiny writing like some of my students do, where my eyeballs are just like I'm practically going blind trying to read it, uh, if you're that person, you'll fit everything in one column. That's totally fine with me. A seven plus three is the 10. Nine plus one is 10. You keep carrying things over. You get your original 700 and you're good to go. All right, next one, 31, 399. Okay, so for this one, when I look at my 31 and I look at 39, I can't fit multiples into my 39. Now keep your first digit in the quotient over the tens place because one times 31 will give you the 31. We will now subtract and then we'll use our ones. So nine minus one is eight and that in a comparison is fine to move on to the bring down. Now with the 89, if I had 30 and I said, okay, 30, 60, 90, there's your three, but that would be 90 and I don't have 90 and I have more than 30. So I can't use the three, I gotta use two. So you're reasoning about what your answer will be. And, and you think ahead, you don't just throw something down. I mean, you could, but it'll take you longer. Two times one, two times three. Subtract, nine minus two is seven, eight minus six is two. Now you compare and you look and you say, okay, this has to be less than my divisor, and it is. It's still a big number, but that's okay. Uh, 31 times 12. Notice that I put the big one on top, but this one's the divisor, and this one's on the bottom, and this is the divisor. It really doesn't matter. Two times one, two. Two times three, six. One times one, one. One times three, three. Notice I didn't put a zero. That's okay. There's nothing there. That's the value of zero. Two, seven, three. You can put a zero there if you want. And look, I have lots of room, so I'm going to put my 27 here, and I'm going to add those up and get 399, which is what I started with. So I get a star. Hooray. Okay, are you getting the hang of it? I hope so. A couple more over here. Good practice for you. Make your bracket. 42. 820 on the inside. And, oh, goodness, if I had two 42s, what would I have? I would have 84. That's going to be too big, so I can only have one. 
1 times 42. 42, do your subtraction, and look, you get 40. That's an even bigger remainder than I had in problem D, but that's okay because it's still less than 42. So I bring down my zero, and I'll tell you what, I automatically am thinking the next number is going to be 9. When I have a leftover this big, I automatically just go, oh, that's probably going to be 9. Let's see what it is. 9 times 2 is 18. Carry the 1 over here. 9 times 4 is 36, plus 1 is 37. Yep. Plenty of room. You can't get a digit bigger than 9. That's your biggest single digit. Do your subtraction. If you don't know how to count up, say, to round to 380 and then go, oh, okay, well, this is um, a difference of 20 plus the 2. That below it, it's 22. If you don't know how to count up like that, use the standard algorithm. Take 1, give 10, and then borrow again. Take 1, give 10. That can give you all the numbers you need to get all the way across. There's your two, there's your two. So the difference is 22, how about that? And we're all done in the ones place. So your remainder is 22, do your check. Take your 42 times 19. Nine times two, 18, carry the one. Nine times four is 36, plus one is 37. Move over to the tens place. One times two is two, one times four is four, easy peasy. That's actually 420 right there. Add up your partial products, 9, 7. I have 798, but that's not my final answer because I need to add my remainder. Okay, don't forget about adding that. 8 and 2, 10, carry the 1. 9, 10, 12, carry. Gives me 820, which I compare and I say, hooray. Okay. And the final practice problem, 56 into 908. Notice I make a little curve here. Why do I do that? Because a lot of the times students will make a straight line and it looks like a one. And I've seen so many kids make mistakes thinking it's a one or treating it like it's a one. And so I make a little curve. It really helps me. Maybe it can help you too. Anyway, with 56, if I look at my two first digits, it's 90. I can't have anything more than one. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply, get 56. We'll have a big uh, remainder with our subtraction, but that's okay. If you don't want to count up, use the standard algorithm and take one and give 10. That leaves you with four and three here. That's less than 56, so you can go ahead and bring down the eight. Now this one, you might actually have to think for a minute. This is the only one that has been a challenge at all with the leftovers and what digit would go here. Now this is when you go back to the strategy, uh, I wish I had. I wish I had something close to about 60. Because if I had 60, I could say 6 times 5 is 30. But I have less than that. So it's probably a little bit more. So I could guess a 6 and see where that gets me. 6 times 6 is 36. I got to a point when I was a kid where I would do a very light number until I was sure because <laughs> I got tired of erasing. So 6 times 6, 36, carry the 3. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 3 is 33. Look, I'm very close, but I am still less, so I can do my subtraction and see where that gets me, and I have 12 left. That's a nice remainder. Not too much. Take you and do your check. 56 times 16. You don't have to write the word if, if you just do the check. 6 times 6, 36, carry the 3. Again, 30 plus 3 is 33. Got that one. And then hold that spot if you'd like, 1 times 6, 1 times 5. And that's that 560 that would be here. Put those together, 6, 9, 8. We're not done. Take your 896, copy it correctly, and add that remainder. 6 plus 2 is 8. 9 plus 1 is 10. Carry, and we get 908. And there you go. So those are your practice problems. Now we have a couple of word problems. Don't forget the back. There's one more on the back. Okay, so a couple of word problems. I do hope these are helpful. If they're helpful, click subscribe, come back, and watch more. Don't cheat though. Some of the kids at, at school, they're like, I watch your videos, I get all the answers. I'm like, yeah, use it right. Use it right, you're only cheating yourselves. Okay. When dividing 878 by 31, a student finds a quotient of 28 with a remainder of 11. Check the student's work and use the check to find the error in the solution. All right, so there's an error. So this isn't 
totally right. Divide 878 by 31. Notice how I'm setting it up. This is the dividend. This is the divisor. They're telling you that the quotient is 28. So we can try that not knowing where the uh, error is, assuming that these are right, but it, the error is going to be in the quotient or the remainder or the calculation somewhere along the way. Okay, so let's start out with the 2 in the tens place. 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times 3 is 6. Let's see what we get. 7 minus 2 is 5, and 8 minus 6 is 2. So if you end up with your 25 there, you should be thinking, compare, it's less, let's proceed. If you have 258, now we need to start thinking, round that 31 to 30, and count by threes till you get really close to 25. So that would be like about an eight, which is what they have. So I'm gonna go ahead and use what they have. Eight times one is eight. Eight times three is 24. So it's still looking good so far with that quotient. So far, no errors. Eight minus eight is zero. Hmm. And five minus four is one. So the remainder is 10. And they said the remainder was 11. So the check, okay, if I was going to use um, the check that they did, which would be 28 times 31, let's multiply and show to see, like, how you can find the error. 1 times 8, 1 times 2, 8 times 3 is 24, carry the 2, 6, 7, 8. Here's your check. And if I was going to use the 11, if I was going to use that, I would end up with 879. What? That is not equal to what I got. Okay? So we know that the remainder is the problem. And so the check can help you identify where problems are. If you calculated incorrectly somewhere, these things aren't going to match. You're going to have some problems that stand out. So when it doesn't match, you have to go stop, go back, look at your work, and, and actually redo it. You may have to erase the whole thing and start over. But with long division, sadly, that is pretty common. Okay, so don't feel bad if that's you. Last problem. A baker was going to arrange 432 desserts, oh my, into rows of 28. The baker divides, oh, the lights, they haven't gone out in a while. I think I've been sitting too much today. Okay, the baker divides 432 by 28 and gets a quotient of 15. Again, they're giving us the answer with a remainder of 12. Explain what the quotient and remainder represent. So... You could set this up and show what it all is, but if you don't know how to label it, you're probably not going to know what they represent. So let, let me just set it up for you. 432 desserts. Okay. Into rows of 28. Now, these are the numbers that they've given us. So that would be like, let's imagine cupcakes. Okay, so rows of 28, that's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. That's a row of 28. This is one row of 28. And so that's what it would look like. The baker divides this and gets a quotient of 15. So what does the quotient represent. So if these are all the desserts and it's 28 and then it's 28 and then it's 28 and then it's 28, are you getting where I'm going with this? Dot, dot, dot. What does the 15 represent? And that would be the fact that 28 is being repeated. So that's going to be what? Rows. So you can work it through 1 times 8, 1 times 2, do your subtraction, borrow and regroup. I had to think about that for a second. 15 is less than 28. Bring down your 2. There's your 5. 
40, 10, 14. Here's your remainder with the remainder of 12. So what now? If it's 15 rows, dot, 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 all the way down to 15 rows of all these 28 desserts and so on, then what is the 12? Well, after creating this array of 15 rows of 28, the 12, it's still desserts, okay? This is desserts that don't make a whole row. And so they're leftover, they're the remainder, that's why we have that term, it's remaining. It's not making a full set. In order to be a full set, I would have to have 28, and I just don't have it. Okay, I've got 15 rows of 28, and then I've got 12 desserts left. Think of 12 cupcakes that just don't fit. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful, um, and click subscribe, come back again, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye for now.